Hi friends, so it's happening uh, again, not not in the good way, not in the it's happening way, but uh, in the way that uh, YouTube has taken down uh, one of our videos for good. And uh, this might sound like deja vu. If you're familiar with Surf's lore, you might know that on April 1st, I can't even remember, two years ago, uh, we had our entire channel taken down. This one, the one you're watching right now, it was effectively just terminated. Anyways, we just woke up one day and uh, the channel was gone. It just erased from the internet. We had an email from YouTube. YouTube that effectively said that our channel was uh, violating spams and scams and malpractices of that nature. It was weird and scary and horrifying. Luckily, a whole bunch of people on the internet, uh, including some righties, but mostly lefties, jumped to our defense. This is before we knew any of them. People like Asan Piker and uh, H-Bomber Guy, for example, were tweeting out the story and even a, a lesser-known thought slurm. And uh, thanks to that, YouTube actually had to respond and ended up issuing us an apology and... That was the last time we've dealt with that whole kind of kerfuffle. We've continued to make videos, typically uh, going after liberals or right-wing reactionaries, pundits, and uh, we use them as a jumping off point to either talk about leftist theory or talk about, uh, you know, high-level ideas. And in the marketplace of high-level ideas, uh, we've also come under some scrutiny, mostly because when people get deplatformed, notably most recently uh, the President of the United States, it's fun to stay. So when Mr. Trump was effectively removed from the internet, a lot of people came after me because I made a lot of statements, uh, particularly to Kevin Sorbo. Trance, right? Saying that this is capitalism. This is how capitalism works. These are private companies. These companies have monopolies under the free market. And because of that, they get to dictate while we interact with each other. You see, these companies have grown to such a size that you need to use them. If not, you're either going to have trouble accessing work, friends, family, jobs. I mean, we use these things for everything. We don't think about it, but the device that you have in front of you right now, whether it's your cell phone or a Nintendo DS or whatever you watch this on, it most likely is the device that you use more than any other personal electronic device in your household on a daily basis. I'm talking for hours. We use these devices for everything. We use them to talk to our family. We use them to work. We use them to order groceries. We even use them to get off. They're ubiquitous at this point. Everyone uses these computers, these cell phones, these smartphones, these Gijima gadgets, whatever you want to call it. Whatever product is basically getting children to mine emeralds somewhere for Elon Musk, we're using those devices. And because of that, the companies that profit and monetize our ability to talk with each other, our social interactions, if you will, uh, they've grown so powerful, so grand, that they almost seem like gads. And the people who run them probably think that they're gods. This is a problem, and a problem that I've kind of stayed on the same page on, despite the fact that the conservatives think that I'm pointing, that I'm just a massive hypocrite right now. Private companies should not control the public forum, but they do, because whether you're a conservative or a liberal, a lefty or a righty, everyone seems to have a problem with these big companies making the decisions. No one really seems to like Jack Dorsey, except whoever provides him with whale placentas, because they're just racking in the money. I only eat once every fortnight, uh, usually a few, few dried raisins. Um, they're delicious. And I wonder what is the next stage of this. I try to only sleep in, in a fresh whale's placenta. So if you were unaware, on Saturday, January 16th, YouTube did it again. This time to our secondary channel, The Surf Times. I just woke up to two emails. The first one said that the video that I had done on Paul Joseph Watson being obsessed with eggs and shoe on head was targeted harassment. And both parties, including Chu and Head and Paul Joseph Watson, to his credit, came out publicly and said, that is not the case. I was not harassed. This is not harassment. Um, that didn't matter. Uh, that it was one email saying that, and then the next email right afterwards was, we have terminated your entire channel because we have found it in violation of harassment. So once again, I made a tweet about this, and once again, a whole bunch of big people came to our defense. This is a privilege. I recognize that. Most people don't have access to a whole bunch of big accounts that are going to be able to uh, retweet and tweet the story out whenever something like this happens. The solidarity of a whole bunch of other leftist content creators, and even some people on the right, come out and tweet out that this is a wrong thing. And a huge shout out to people like Kyle Kalinske, Crystal Ball, Son Piker, Bo the Fifth Column, even a perhaps... Uh, in a different parallel universe, mushroomed out Thought Slime, who thought that he had to save the universe by coming to my defense, which is both adorable and horrifying. I still stand firmly by the belief that private corporations should not control our social interactions. They should not dictate what we can and cannot say to each other, what is or what isn't free speech. That should not be the realm of private companies. And unfortunately, it is. And double unfortunately, 
whenever we have this argument in which we say that there should be free speech absolutism and we say that, hey, by the way, for these private companies, uh, they shouldn't ban any kind of speech. All speech should be permitted. And this comes from both sides. I've got people like Crystal Ball and Kyle Kalinske on one end of the argument saying that there should be no censorship. And of course, everyone on the right saying the same thing because, of course, they're a little bit behind on the Overton window, what with the whole misgendering stuff. That shouldn't be how we frame this debate at all. Because just by framing it that way, you're giving the power to Mark Zuckerberg. You're giving the power to Jack Dorsey. You're giving the power to whoever invented MySpace. It's that, I forget the name of that dude. He only had one name. Was it Dan? I think it was Dan. Sorry, Dan. We shouldn't be framing this as there are sometimes good things that this company does, sometimes bad things that this company does. Um, they should either be giving everyone free speech or say they should be giving no one free speech. They shouldn't have the power to decide that at all. That's the problem and always has been. Now, we got our channel back, which is awesome. And honestly, I cannot thank you enough. But it wasn't a couple days later that an even scarier incident happened. Because honestly, yeah, it's really frightening to me to have my channel taken down, especially because it's a huge source of income. And it's basically like the snap of a Thanos fist. Because it's basically at the snap of a Thanos. Because it's basically at the snap of a... Like a light switch, YouTube is able to decide whether or not someone's entire career uh, exists or does not exist. And for someone like me, I thought it would be beyond the pale for them to do it uh, for a channel that had 40,000 subscribers. It did not matter. This week, we released a video on Monday. Basically, I've been working on this video since January 6th, the, uh, the day of the insurrection. Because it was astonishing to me to have seen the events that took place that day. And then to see all the right-wing pundits either feign like they had nothing to do with it, or act as if they weren't complicit in some way. I don't think if they were, unless they were like, you know, standing on the grounds and smashing windows and stuff, I don't think they were directly involved in that event on the day of. But I think leading up to it, all of them were pushing, and the ones I mentioned specifically, people like Steven Crowder, Ben Shapiro, The Quartering, Tim Pool, they were pushing conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories about the president having unfairly lost the election, conspiracy theories about the president having the election stolen from him, conspiracy theories about dead people voting, conspiracy theories about ballots not being counted, conspiracy theories that eventually led to a large swath of people from a whole bunch of different makeups deciding to take it upon themselves to save the country by doing an insurrection. That didn't happen in a vacuum. That didn't happen just because Donald Trump was saying the election was stolen from me. That happened because a lot of people were echoing the president's sentiments, and they were doing it for profit. That was the point of that video that I uploaded. That video was flagged for spams and scams. And then when I appealed it, they gave me a strike on this channel, and the video was permanently taken down. I'm not going to be putting that video back up because now I'm too scared of getting a second strike on this channel or something worse. So I'm going to make the link publicly available. You can download the video and see for yourselves. And you also have our full permission to upload it anywhere you want. I will warn you, however, if you are a smaller channel and you upload it to your YouTube as a mirror, while it is courageous of you, you will risk possibly getting your channel a strike. And I would not recommend doing that. And I don't think there's any safe way to say this. It could jeopardize your career. I also think it's wildly hypocritical because if there is a TOS and we must adhere to it and everyone is basically falling under the same guidelines, Steven Crowder, the man who made multiple videos on conspiracy theories, multiple videos on the election being stolen, one of whom has a thumbnail of him holding a gun, waving at his audience, saying, calling all patriots to disobey. That's all still up. All of it. I mean, even if it's not making money through advertisement, which they can because he's had his advertisement turned back on, it's still up there and it's still pushing those conspiracy theories. I think this is a very horrifying precedent because this is speech being censored and this is a narrative being censored, particularly one that involves an entire political apparatus, a whole bunch of right-wing pundits. And the right will love to tell you that they believe in free speech absolutism, that they don't believe in censorship, which is kind of funny because they are just gleefully loving what's going on right now with the serfs. I still stand by that message. I don't think private corporations should have this power. I think they've grown to the point now where they are pretty much public utilities. They are necessary. The public should have them. These companies should be broken up. And if you think that's impossible, the United States has done it before. Lesson here in all of this is uh, A. Thank you so much to everybody for your support. 
please do not turn this into your cause du jour. And I mean that sincerely because there's a lot of fucked up shit that the left should be fighting on right now. And this is not one of them. This is more me bringing attention to this matter because I want people to be self-aware of it. And I want people to understand where we stand on this issue. And I also want people to hopefully learn something in regards to this. Because uh, going forward, if you're a content producer, this directly affects you. If you're going to criticize the right or you're going to criticize even the left or even criticize the liberals... Um, it really depends on how you do it, because if you poke the wrong bear or you poke the wrong hornet's nest, there is a possibility for you to get mass flagged or false flagged and have your channel and or your videos taken down when it has nothing to do with the reasons why they're being taken down. This is one of the problems with AI policing us, because it is AI at the end of the day. These companies have grown to such a size where if you have over a billion users pumping out content constantly, there is no physical way for human beings to police that, so they depend on machines, they depend on computers, and computers, of course, are susceptible to tricks, just as humans are. I mean, after all, humans made those computers. If you want us to advertise your channel or work, please go to wearserfs.com and email us a 20 to 30 second ad and we'll take it on to the end of one of our videos to help promote your leftist channel or progressive something. Whatever you do. To our god, I'm Rast, Xander Corvus, and Schlatsky. We shall commit blood sacrifices in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, our lives are yours to command. To our lords, Jeffrey Lamb, Trevor R., Stephen, Hans Josephin, Poppy Nelson, Ryan Lubin, Jimothy K. Meeblebeeps Jr., we bow meekly for your pleasure. To our knights of the round table, Josh Mickelson, Dylan Byth, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, Political Puppy, Jimmy Big Nuts, Andreas Chitoro, Good Poon Hates Cops, That's Solid Poon Then, Dr. Zayas, Yopi, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Jack Darko, Thomas Barrington, Jay Fraser Cartwright, Goofalankius, Melissa Murphy, Nicholas Marks, Alexander Thaler, Ali Rada Jaffer, Alex Gauvin, Radical Maniac, We Salute You.